so that would mean um, kind of faking out the listener, making them think that it's going to be some kind of uh, a song where where it's very unromantic and it's maybe someone you don't like, it sounds like. <laughs> Hey, Rangers. I hope you guys are all doing great. Uh, this week is the last week of drafts, um, the last section that you'll be doing a draft of this week, and that's your introduction uh, to the tune. So um, after this, then the following week, you'll be putting it all together with your revisions and making sheet music and score and parts and turning that in. Uh, as your final project for the term. Uh, so I encourage you to be working on your revisions this week in addition to your introduction. Uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions about that, about sheet music and parts, about notation software. I'll be dealing with that a little more next week, but uh, this week I'm happy to answer questions about that in addition to questions about uh, sections we've already worked on and revisions and about your introductions. Uh, so please, please, I really appreciate it when, when I get questions from you guys. And I think those of you who are asking them are finding, finding it helpful. Um, okay, so this week we're doing introductions. Uh, now, in real life, not every song needs an introduction. Um, and some songs, a lot of times, just a real short introduction can be really nice in real life. For the purpose for the purposes of our class, I would like us all to write a little bit more extended types of introductions. Not to say they have to be super long, but they definitely have to be something that is uh, worked out and involves some actual notation, okay? So chords and slashes and writing solo for somebody is not going to cut it for the purposes of this class. Um, if it's just like a, a short vamp, then I really encourage you for this class to write something on top of it, something that happens in front of that vamp uh, to, to, to really make a, a very uh, clear and significant introduction to your tune. If you ultimately decide you don't want that extended an introduction for your tune, you can always cut it later for real life. Um, but for the purposes of this class, write something uh, and you can always you can always get rid of it uh, later. It's always much easier to write something and cut it than to not have it written in the first place. So uh, today we're going to listen to some introductions and we'll just mostly get some ideas and inspiration from, from them. We'll be listening mostly to intros from combos, from, from jazz combo recordings. However, uh, I also encourage you to think about intros from all kinds of music. Um, big band music in particular has some great introductions. Um, you know, music with, with vocalists often has some really good introductions. Um, or orchestral music, Broadway music is, is super great for intros um, oftentimes. So, you know, check out different styles of music uh, for, for inspiration and to see what you want from your introduction. Intros are kind of neat in that they, they're setting the tone that the listener will bring to the rest of the tune. So sometimes you want to really get your listener in the mood for what they're about to hear. So for instance, if it's a, a love song, if it's a romantic type of song, you might want your intro to be very romantic and, and, and get the listener in the mood for a romantic song. Um, and that's one approach. The other approach is to do the opposite. Um, And so, so that would mean um, kind of faking out the listener, making them think that it's going to be some kind of uh, a song where, where it's very unromantic and it's maybe someone you don't like. It sounds like it sounds like, and then you surprise them by uh, then the listener 
is surprised by, oh, it turns out they actually uh, are feeling romantic about this. So that that's just like, doesn't have to be romantic. That's just like the example I gave, I would thought of. But uh, you know, in other words, play the op- you can play the opposite for your introduction, and then it'll be kind of a surprise when the main tune comes in. Um, you can, you know, so other ways to think in terms of the opposite. If it's going to be like a super fast kind of tune, um, you know, starting with with a slow kind of more brooding introduction can can really set the set us up so we're going to be like whoa when the when the fast tune kicks in or vice versa um if you've got like a nice medium tune and you start it with something really chaotic up front um you're going to really feel the 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 nice like pocket or whatever when you get to the medium tempo so if you want it just depends on do you want it just, do you want to start out swinging and just like continue swinging or do you want to set it up so that it's a surprise when, when the band starts swinging or whatever it is. But anyway, you can play the opposite with your intro. Intros can, in real life, they can be long or short. And, and we'll, uh, we're just going to listen to some examples. A nice thing about intros in terms of examples is um, they're at the beginning of the song. So... It, you, I don't need to give you a ton of context beyond the intro. Um, I'll start with some of my own intros, and then we'll listen to some other great intros. And again, we're listening to combo intros, um, mostly so you get the sounds of, of these instruments in your ear, but um, and, and to hear how, how like people are using horns and rhythm section. But again, you know, checking out... Uh, intros to different styles of music, uh, different size music is really helpful. If you think about like, um, like Broadway, that's great because with, with Broadway shows, the intros are always setting the tone. It's always, and it's not just the tone of the song, but the tone of the scene you're coming from into the song. Right. And so, um, same with endings. It's, you know, it's a little manipulative, but, not in a bad way most of the time, <laughs> it's, but it's deciding, you know, what, what kind of applause do you want to be getting from the audience? Do you want them to give more of a sigh and like, or do you want them to like, be like, whoa, that, that's sort of the way, what we're thinking about in terms of the decisions we make with all this stuff. Um, yeah. So without further ado, let's listen to some of these, um, Here's one uh, an intro to one of my tunes. It's called the song is called Jesse's Song. Um and it uses the horns and piano and bass. Uh and it's kind of does this chorale that doesn't really set up a whole lot about the tune except the mood and and I think the key. Um and then you know the, the they hold the band holds a chord and then the drums come in with the time. So we'll just listen to the beginning of this. And again, with all of my own charts, uh, if you are interested in the sheet music or asking me questions about them, I'm happy to send you scores just to ask. Uh, So here's the intro on Jesse's song. So that's, uh, that's that. You can kind of hear how it's, it's setting up kind of a mood and then it feels like a nice sort of lift when the tempo kicks in. Um, 
The next tune, uh, another one of mine, this is a, a composition of mine called I Regret. And it just has three horns just playing um, a couple bars, I guess like four bars, harmonized pretty simply. Um, but it, it sets the, the tone for, um, for the song. Uh, so anyway, here, here is this one. <laughs> goes into a ballad um, from there. So that one kind of sets the mood. Um, in a way, it can get the audience to sort of listen a little bit when when you um, have just horns. Uh, it can be kind of a thing that almost forces the, the audience to be quiet <laughs> and really listen. And so it kind of gets, gets people's attention. Um, Uh, here's another one. Again, these are, I sort of picked some of mine that are more, slightly more extended, you, you know, not super extended. We'll listen to some by some other people that are a little more. This one is a composition of mine called Kun Um And this introduction, this is a song that's just for um, trombone and tenor saxophone and rhythm section. And so this one doesn't use the drums, but it's, again, it's, it's setting up kind of this, um, it sets up the, the crunch that we, the, the cluster that is used, uh, throughout the composition. Um, and, uh, kind of sets the mood and then the, the groove kicks in after the, this introduction. So here it is. <laughs> Again, it's, it doesn't have to be a super long intro, but it, it just does its kind of does its job. I'm going to play you now the intro to three different tunes of mine from an album called Persephone. Uh, and what I think is kind of neat about this is uh, it was and, and I played you some of these uh, last week, actually. But um, thinking about them as intros, I think hearing them back to back. Uh, one thing I really like as a composer is trying to think in terms of the big picture, in terms of creating a set. Um, so for me, I, I ended up using the introductions to a number of songs on this album and actually backgrounds and things like that too, to br bring some themes in for, so that all the songs would feel sort of connected. Um, so anyway, this is, um, first we'll hear the intro to a song called Rise and Fall.
that was that intro. And then later in the album, there's a song called The Dancer. And here's the intro on that. song on the album and it's called spring and here's the the beginning of that <laughs> So anyway, it was just as I was going through intros, I noticed, oh wow, all three of those um, are using kind of the same motivic ideas, and that that can be a fun way to think about about using intros. Um, okay, uh, I want to play you now just some other intros, just to give you ideas. Um, here's one by the great Wayne Shorter, uh, and the tune is "Witch Hunt" off the album "Speak No Evil." And uh, Wayne wrote um, kind of a fanfare. And uh, again, it's, it's kind of getting the audience. Th I guess with all these intros, actually, think, think to yourself, what, what mood is this getting me in before the main tune kicks in? So this, this one basically starts with a fanfare. Um, let's, let's hear it. Okay. Um, here's another. We'll, we'll listen to some Art Blakey uh, recordings. Um, here's uh, a great, great Art Blakey recording. Um, the song is Pensativa by Claire Fisher. That's got a just a cool intro. See, see what you think in terms of what it makes you feel right off the bat and how it how it prepares you for the the main melody. That's a uh, Freddie Hubbard's arrangement. I'll just keep going through these. Here's uh, another one. This is a, a great intro that's um, by Bobby Timmons. It's, it's the song D Dat Dare. And, um, you know, it's a, it's just, it's a really definitive intro. Um, Everyone, it's like you can't do the song without this intro. <laughs> um, even though it's it's not for horns or anything, but it's it's a very clearly definitive written kind of intro. So check it out. All right um, now, um, here's a great intro to a ballad. This is. Um, Great Benny Golson composition, I Remember Clifford. And this is uh, off the album uh, Meet the Jazz Tet. Um, so it's uh, Art Farmer playing trumpet. And uh, so this is a tune that, again, it, it's just kind of one of these uh, uh, really definitive uh, intros. And... Uh, Notice, I would say with this one, you know, with some sometimes we are going for playing the opposite, but I feel like this one isn't doing that. This one is really just setting the tone for the tune. Oh, that's a great album. Um, okay. 
another thing to th- consider with intros is the idea of like layering. So sometimes if you really just want it to be a vamp, but you want it to feel more extended, then uh, you can really get, you can layer it. So that means bringing in uh, sort of different parts to happen over the vamp. So, so really, if you're going to have a vamp, like really build it up in an intentional kind of way for this class. Um, you know, in reality, um, for small groups especially, you, you, we're always balancing uh, how much freedom we give the players. And, you know, you know if, if we write too much, it can start to feel kind of fussy. Um, so we want to give, in a small group, we want to give people a chance to do their thing. Um, but at the same time, we want to give them enough material that they'll be able to make something that feels definitive and special. Um, for the purposes of this class, I would say, uh, err on the side of, of maybe overwriting if you're going to do too much one way or the other. Um, and again, you can always, it's super easy to cut stuff after the fact, but see, you know, just take some risks, see, you know, see try to really set it up so you are making it happen um, with your arranging. So speaking of layering parts, here's some Herbie Hancock. Um, This is a watermelon man off the album Headhunters. Um, Just hear how all the different parts come in and, and bring something together. Woo. (laughs) It just gets you feeling good, um, you know. So really bringing the listener in to, to just, like, there's a certain point in there. I mean, the whole thing is funky, but there's, like, one point where, like, something comes in. It's like, whoa, it just got really funky. Um, <laughs> um, anyway, so that's that's something to, to consider. Um, and the way I often will sometimes, sometimes you do a building from the bottom, but sometimes, you know, you can... Um, think about uh you come up with all the different parts in terms of your process for something like that you come up with all the different layers and then you figure out how you are going to sort of scale how you break them down how you scale it back which one do you start with um think how different that would have been if they had started with like the guitar riff and then brought the flute in later (laughs) it would be totally different um Okay, uh, just going through just some definitive intros. Here's uh, Larry Young, Woody Shaw, The Moon Train. Right, so that, I mean, really just, again, it's so so often it's just getting, getting the listener's attention. Um, you know, it's starting on kind of a more dissonant place. I think, and uh, so it gets us listening and like, oh, it's come down a bit, and then the main melody kicks in and it feels kind of smooth. Um, another, here's a, a, a very definitive intro um, and and pretty simple, um, but uh, this is, and I'm sure you've all heard it, but let's listen to it just thinking about how the intro works. This is Miles Davis, All Blues, off of Kind of Blue. So, I mean, there's a lot going on in, in there, and none of it's that complicated, but um, it's every ounce of it is super definitive. You know, you've got... So the bass is playing that... Okay, so that ostinato line setting up the G7 chord. Then you've got the drones playing. You know, you've got Jimmy Cobb, just beautiful brushes... Um, and, and then, uh, you've got Bill Evans playing, playing the, a trill, uh, on the piano. And then you have the saxes just playing that. And, and everybody, it's just got like a, a vibe to it the moment you hear it. Um, and when, I mean, they've set the stage for when Miles arrives. Um, so, so a lot of times, you know, as composers, we, we often are thinking, 
about like, like everything has to be complicated and more and more, um, I, I, I really try to not look for the complicated, but look for the most like direct and definitive solution. Um, you know, one person I listen to a lot in recent years for this is Kate Bush. Um, so, so often I feel like, um, and, and she's not, uh, not, uh, you know, she's a pop, uh, person, but I feel like she's really great at getting to the essence of an idea and, um, and using it really definitively. Um, and that's something that it's really easy for composers for us to get into like trying to, you know, out, out complexify <laughs> ourselves. Um, and, uh, so she's one person I listen to in terms of the pop pop world for that. But, um, you know, miles, I mean, that, that's probably that, that whole album, you know, kind of blew. I think one of the reasons it's so, you know, it's so definitive is because it's so definitive. Just every choice on it is, feels like the only possible choice. Um, it's, it's just very clear in its intention from beginning to end. Okay, uh, let's do one last one. This is a Michael Mossman composition. This is from the great band uh, OTB, Out of the Blue. Um, and um, this composition is called Ikasashi. And this is a, an example of like a very arranged introduction um, that takes a real dramatic uh, and, and is playing the opposite. Um, so, yeah, let's listen to it. So, again, I mean, he gets a lot of sound out of, you know, three horns and a rhythm section. Um, you know, so he's playing the opposite there and, and really effectively. Um, a cool thing about intros is they, they really don't have to have anything to do with the rest of the tune. <laughs> they can just be their own kind of section, which is neat. If you think about it, most, you, you know, it'd be, you, you usually wouldn't really do that with other parts of a tune. They're usually going to have some relation. But the intro, I mean, you can do whatever you want. Um, you know, uh, in terms of one other place to get ideas for intros, um, we'll listen to this more when we're doing the big band stuff. Um, but I will mention a few of my favorite albums for intros. One is the, the Joni Mitchell uh, recordings with the London Symphony Orchestra uh, with Vince Mendoza's arrangements. Um, and those intros are just spectacular. Uh, so the names of those albums are Both Sides Now is one album, and the other is Travelogue. And then another album that's just got great intros um, is Joe Henderson Big Band. Um, and uh, those have intros. A lot of them are by um, like Slide Hampton and Jimmy Heath um, and, and Mike Mossman and, and Joe Henderson. Um, and, and there are a number of arrangers on there, but, um, but wow, the, the Slide Hampton and, and, uh, Jimmy Heath introductions. Wow. So we'll listen to all that stuff when we're dealing with big band stuff, which is why I haven't included it in this video. But if you're looking for some more inspiration, uh, I highly recommend those albums. Okay. Uh, anyway. Please let me know what questions you've got. I am super happy to answer them all, and I can't wait to hear your introductions. Have fun, everybody. <laughs>